so hello guys what's up and welcome back to my youtube channel and welcome to another interesting episode on the crazy week that was with barista neze it's me your girl barista neze and this is Nezerville. So we'll be starting today's gist with Nengi, the big brother Nengi, aka Nengi Penge, the former light skinned beauty on BB Niger. So, guys, when it comes to Ponzi schemes, like get quick schemes, eh, Nigerians can never learn. No matter how badly it ends, eh, just give it some time. When another one springs up, Nigerians will still flood the air with a reckless abandon. I remember when MMM dealt badly with Nigerians. The Nigerians lost billions of Naira in the MMM Ponzi scheme. And within a short time, another Ponzi called FM Forex Trading came out 100% return on investment. Ha! Nigerians ran there. And of course, that MBA Forex thing sank. Now, one of the alleged crooners of these kind of Ponzi schemes have been arrested and charged to court. And this particular man defrauded Nigerians of over 1.2 billion naira in Ponzi. And you know, guys, the normal thing is when these guys are picked up by EFCC, they start confiscating their properties and recovering as much assets that they can from them. Okay, we're coming, the gist is covered. Before we could say Jack... The beautiful baby Niger star Nengi Pengi's Range Rover, which is valued at about 37 million naira, was confiscated by the EFCC. You might start to ask, ah, ah, what is the relationship? Is Nengi a Ponzi? Has Nengi started Ponzi scheme? What is her business in all of this? It has been revealed that this particular guy is one of the sponsors of Nengi and he purchased that vehicle for her, hence making it a proceed of a crime. Now, what triggered a lot of people is not that a guy, of course, a married man, someone's husband, is sponsoring the lifestyle of a young lady. That has always been and will always be, okay? What was triggering people is not also the fact that she comes on social media to, you know, post this lavish gifts and lavish lifestyle. That is her business and she's at liberty to do that, yeah? What is driving people crazy is the impression that she gave to others about that vehicle you know this independent i can do it on my own self-made big girl small god kind of vibes and according to them giving people the impression that they're not working hard enough like why am i so unfortunate i am putting in the work i am doing everything why can't i just live this soft life and get all the pleasures of this world okay so that is where the bone of contention was why is it that celebrities like herself and so many others like her come on social media to give the impression that they are independently making it when they're being bankrolled by other people that is basically the anger of so many people personally personally speaking for myself i do not get moved or influenced by show off of affluence or wealth on social media do let me know what you think do those kind of things pepper you and make you feel inadequate or it's none of your business so in other words let us know whether you think that nengi was wrong for posing as though she independently bought that vehicle and as though she is running her things independently toying people's mental health giving young girls the impression that they are not enough young girls that look up to her and idolize her do you think that celebrities owe it to their fans to come out straight and let us know when these assets are gotten for them by someone else and when they acquire it by themselves or do you think that it is her business and she has every right to represent her assets as she wishes whether it is true or lies so moving on from that one in Igbo community in the Igbo community there is something that is called aru mm? aru is in simple english abomination and abominable acts and this week we got wind of one real big abomination that happened oh guys trust me this one is going to churn your tummy it's going to make your, your belly turn okay now this story is about a father who has been involved in the long term incestuous relationship with his own daughter and she had gone ahead to bear him two children so mr amechi the abominable dad and his daughter queen basi originally hailed from a quiet state but had moved to anambra state particularly the nobi community and have settled there they have integrated they speak the Igbo language they're just like indigents of the of the village and in this video that made the rounds on social media the villagers had apprehended them they were seated on the floor and they were getting interrogated so in that interview the daughter queen revealed very painfully that her father was responsible for the flowering her and he had been having constant intercourse with her god it's so difficult to even say this i wonder how some men how some men even do this 
this for God's sake. Now, her father had deflowered her and they have been having intercourse, sexual intercourse for a very, very long time. And her two children were from her dad, her biological dad, not stepfather. And that he had made her take an oath never to disclose what was going on between both of them to anybody if not she was gonna die when mr amechi her dad was asked he didn't deny it trust me guys he didn't deny it he clearly stated that yes it was true and that he was scared that his daughter was going to leave him because his wives had left him he was scared that his daughter was going to leave him so he needed something to just pin her down and that was how he started having sex with her and having children with her and made her take the oath of non-disclosure just so she doesn't leave him too so after all of these they were both beaten up they were disgraced around the community and of course they were banished out of that community never to step their foot back in now this is the practice in Igbo culture when there's an incestuous relationship between father and daughter if the daughter is a minor like a child it's only the father that gets banished but if the daughter is an adult as well as the dad of course then both of them would get banished because they believe that as an adult girl you should have been able to have that discernment between right or wrong and you know played a role in that affair that's the belief of those times but now with wokeness with you know psychology with you know social media and you know, everybody speaking up about these kind of things people being aware more and more aware of these kind of things less blame is being given to the lady these days especially women who started experiencing abuse from childhood because you know there's this thing called grooming that our parents 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 were not aware of that if you start you know grooming a baby girl from a tender age even when that child becomes an adult it becomes very very impossible or difficult to break away from that relationship but people in the village do not understand this english you are speaking you're a big girl why should you be sleeping with your father even if he started sleeping with you when you were three years old now that you're 25 don't you so you're supposed to have sense why didn't you stop why didn't you report him you are at fault just as he is that is the belief and the concept that these community guys have so let me know what you think about this in the comment section do you actually think that both father and daughter should be punished that's why she's a big girl why didn't she speak up why didn't she break free or do you honestly think that the only person deserving of punishment here is her dad drop it in the comment section now moving so talking about the queen's passing tons of condolences poured in from all across the world and most people were you know grieving her passing and all of that but most people did not include dr uju anya a nigerian-born professor resident in the united states now in the heat of the moment dr uju took to social media twitter to drop this post a very controversial post that has generated tons of reactions she tweeted i heard the chief monarch of a thiefing raping genocidal empire is finally dying may her pain be excruciating <sighs> okay she went for that to say if anyone expects me to express anything but disdain for the monarch who supervised a government that sponsored the genocide that massacred and displaced half my family and the consequences of which those alive today are still trying to overcome you can keep wishing upon a star now the name uju obviously uju is nigerian of course from Igbo speaking parts and you'll recall that many years ago there was a civil war that was fought by the nigerian government and the biafran government and that civil war saw millions of biafrans starved and killed in what seemed like a genocide and of course britain who were our colonial masters we're in support of Nigeria, not the secessionist group Biafra. So, of course, Uju is still nursing that bitterness. How could the Britons have stayed back? How could the Queen have sat back and watched this happen to her people? So, according to her, it's good radiance to bad Robbie. She doesn't feel a thing. She doesn't wish the Queen rest in peace. She wishes her a very painful experience, right? Even on her deathbed. So the reactions were quite mixed. Some people condemned Professor Wuju for, you know, come on, let bygones be bygones. This is an old dying woman. How can you even think of such a thing, talk less of saying it, talk less of posting it to the world to see? That is not emotional intelligence. While some others supported her for saying the minds of thousands and millions of people who were afraid to say it. Do let me know what you think about Dr. Uju's tweets. In the comment section oh wusagi yo he got marry fail <laughs> oh wusagi yo that day you go marry fail <laughs> oh if 
if hunger catch you, if <laughs> if Owu slap you, <laughs> your eyes go reset. Okay, don't ask me why I'm singing this song, but just listen to the last part of this beautiful episode before we call it a wrap. So in the week that was, we saw the beautiful Moroccan wife of Nigerian businessman and politician Ned Woku take to social media to <laughs> tender an unreserved apology to him and the entire Woko family. I'm sure you'll be asking what is there after a husband and wife's fight. Uh -huh. So what if she apologizes? Wait until I give you the gist. So sometime in February, Lila, her name is Lila, took to social media to bash her husband, who is also the husband of actress Regina Daniel, Nollywood actress. She claims that she didn't meet any woman living with Ned Woko when she married him and moved in with him and that she was a virgin, he was the one that deflowered her, and that she was a model before she married him, but as soon as he married her, he stopped her from modeling, okay? And the promise that he was gonna love, care, and take care of her. And so he has been doing until he married Nollywood actress Regina Daniels. Now this is her own side of the story. This is her saying this. And she said after Ned Woko married Regina Daniels, their marriage took a different turn and Ned was no longer loving to her. He was mean and hateful and harsh, you know, and she described the 10 years that she spent in that marriage as the worst time of her life ever and that she was done. She's living. She's not having any of it anymore. And you know, basically that marriage is over. That was in February only a few months ago. So a little bit we're surprised. What is this apology all about? I thought you have moved on. Why are you coming back? Hey, trust the netizens, trust social media users. And they were like, <laughs> oh, who has sa <laughs> stomach infrastructure? They were like, Sakpa, is that you? <laughs> Sakpa, is that you? <laughs> we can see you. We can smell you. Is that, you know, need for money coming, you know? Of course, Ned is a very, very wealthy person he's a billionaire and he has a reputation for you know caring and lavishing gifts on his wives so people took the social media to bash this lady and say oh please this is not love this is not repentance this is not forgiveness and all of that this is purely for financial gains why come on social media bash your husband's end the marriage and after a few months you now realize and let me let me read what she posted on, on social media she said this is to my entire Ned Woko family I have realized that I made mistakes they were not intentional I listened too much to outsiders and I have decided to apologize to my husband and other members of the family I want peace and progress in the family this is a sweet message to me it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything but I don't know why people are just you know thinking that you know she's coming back because of all the money and influence and affluence that she has missed in this few months don't let me know what you think about all of this Ned Woko drama in the comment section and with that guys that brings us to the end of today's episode of the crazy week that was with barrister nezen do let me know which of these stories touched you the most irritated you annoyed you excited you let me know all your feedback thoughts and comments right down there in the comment section if you're yet to subscribe don't forget to hit the subscribe button turn on your bell notifications give this video a big thumbs up and stay glued for our next video it's me your girl barrister nezen and this is nezerville bye guys mm -hmm.